I want to talk a little bit before we go on about the importance of the Holy Eucharist. We talked about the Holy Eucharist as food, right? We need food to eat and to feed and to keep our faith strong. Now, I'm going to give you a phrase. You'll recognize it as soon as I say it. This is my body, okay? Let's take that word. This is my body. All right. When are these words said? During the Mass, right? Do we know what the Mass is? The Mass is defined as the continuation, the perpetualization, the memorial, the continuation of the sacrifice of the cross and of Calvary. All right? So, when Jesus says, this is my body, what happens? What happens? Bread and wine become the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, right? Okay. Yes, sir, you have a question? No. Okay. Yeah. Now, we're going to talk about it just a second. So, the priest holds it up, right? He says, this is my body. This is my blood. All right. Now... You're 12, you're well-versed in English grammar, right? My least favorite subject in school, by the way, when I was your age. And when you study grammar, you study that there's, there are certain parts of speech, right? Verbs, adverbs, participles, articles, right? That sort of thing. All right. So, let's take, like, let's, let's grammatically analyze this. This. Okay? This. Now, when I make a statement, this is a young man. Is, that a fig is he a figment of my imagination? He exists, right? He's got size, weight, color, right? Dimension. So, when Jesus lifts up, like you said, when Jesus lifts up and says, this is my body, he's making a statement. He's pointing to something that really exists. And, of course, it's a, this is a demonstrative pronoun. What's a pronoun? Someone tell me. Defined as person, place, thing, right? Okay. So he's pointing to himself. This is my divine person. Is there any symbolism in that? No, it's very literal, right? Like I point, this is a young man. There's no you know, ambiguity here, right? This is my divine person. That's what he's saying. The word is. Let's take a look at that. Is. First person singular verb to be, right? So he's saying, this is my really existing person, divine person. And that's what the Holy Spirit is. Somebody asked me before. It's a divine, he's a divine person. All right. So. What's the difference between this is my body, this was my body, this will be my body? What's the difference in those three statements? Someone tell me. Tense, right. This was my body. What tense is that? Past. This will be my body. Future. Okay, but what does Jesus say? This is my body. What tense is that? Better believe it. Present. This is my body. Really existing. My divine person really existing. Now. See? In the present. And so we say the real presence. Have you ever heard that term? The real Eucharistic presence of Jesus? He's present three ways. He's present as a person, personally present to us. Okay? Number two, he's present to us as love. Because this Holy Spirit is also the Spirit of good Jesus, because he's God, right? All three, three persons, one God. And he's also present to us now, right now. So anytime a priest says, This is my body, this is my blood, bang. Jesus is there. 
Now, let's analyze this a little further. Why do believe, why do we believe in Jesus? Why do we believe when he says, this is my body, this is my blood, Jesus says those words to the priest, that the body and blood is really present? What is it about Jesus that we believe in? Why do we believe in Jesus? What is it? Who is he? Who is he? God, right? What is it about God that we believe? Remember? How do we spell God? G-O-D, right? Add one letter. Tells you why we believe in God. I always like to play word games. Good! Good. Got a sharp group here. I like that. Yeah. I can work with you. Yeah. Okay, good. G-O-O-D. God is good. Don't forget it. Now, when we say God is good, what does that mean? What makes a person good? Let's put it, let me give you a little clue. What makes a person trustworthy? Can someone tell me? Why do you trust someone? What is it about a person that you can trust? Yes, yes, someone? Yes. Good, yeah, okay. But we're going to develop the goodness, okay? What makes a person good? Especially when they speak. They speak the what? To truth. That means they don't what? There you go. So, we believe in what Jesus says because he is God. This is my body really becomes the body and blood of the Lord Jesus Christ because God is good. That means God is all good. There's no evil in God. Because God is all good. He cannot lie to us and deceive us. Can we lie? Oh, you better believe it. Okay? But God is all good. He himself cannot lie. So when he says, this is my body, this is my blood, we believe it. Even though we can't see the bread and wine actually change into blood. Although, let me tell you something. In the United States... There's a group of um, um, photos and everything. It's called the Vatican Exhibit of Eucharistic Miracles. It shows you how in 20 years, all through 20 centuries of hist history of Christianity, there are places where there are hosts that are flesh. I've seen it myself, like in Lanciano, Italy. There's a host, and you can see flesh. It's flesh. It, and they analyze it. It's cardiac, cardiac heart uh, tissue. And then there's blood, you know, coagulated. And it's been there for at least a thousand years. And so there are Eucharistic miracles to show us that, yes, this is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. But we believe it because God is all good, cannot lie to us on the testimony of God himself, right? And because as all-knowing, see, he cannot deceive us. 